Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So today we're gonna be getting to a video from one of my favorite creators on this platform, which is Peter Mon. Now, this is a great example of if enough people ask me to watch something, I will watch it. Now, this is already a video that I have watched, but I was seeing a lot of people in my Discord talking about this, and I was like, okay, I enjoyed the video so much that I will come on and do it again. I think there's a lot of conversation to be had about this video. I think Peter does a really good job at it. So when enough people wanted me to watch it, I was like, listen, if enough people wanted me to watch anything, I would watch it. Um, so also, by the way, has anyone in here watched Gilmore Girls? Because I have been, my timeline on my For You page is currently like Halloween, like fall, autumn, and in every video they're watching Gilmore Girls. And I'm like, oh, is this a show about like autumn or fall? And people are like, no, but it's just like a show that's really cozy. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? So is it worth the watch? Is it worth the watch? The coloring is very fall in it. Okay, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a chance. I'm currently, I'm I'm soldiering through Orange is the New Black for the second time. And it is just, I was in tears with Orange is the New Black last night. No, it wasn't Suha. I was in tears at Orange is the New Black last night. Genuinely just one of the greatest shows ever. Um, anyway, so let's get to this Peter Mon video. Again, if you do not know, I am daily vlogging. We are currently on day six. We're soldiering through that as well. On my second channel, it's so much fun. Thank you so much to everyone who's been going over and supporting this new little project. I really, really, really appreciate it. We're really close to 45,000 over there. So please consider clicking the link and subscribing. You'll see the vlogs. And anyway, on with this video. So I love that Peter Mon is wearing the Ariana Grande side to side <laughs> hat, the icon member. I've been here all night. She's wearing this hat. Love that Peter Mon wears this hat. Anyway, let's get on to this video. A little bit of a shady part here first that I want to talk about is I want to address a comment that I got in my video yesterday where I was talking about uh, Colleen Ballinger. Or as my neighbor across the street that hears me talking about it often refers to her as Colleen Barringer. Um, <clears throat> She's not the only one that doesn't really know the true, the true Colleen, right? Which I was thinking last night, interestingly enough, as I was watching like Adam McIntyre's video about Corey DeSoto and some things like that, and I was watching some of these other videos about Colleen Ballinger, I think the one positive for Colleen that may have come out of all this mess is that prior to this, everybody referred to her as Colleen. I can remember doing videos here and there about Colleen Ballinger, and I would say Colleen, because I had heard other YouTubers like Trisha Paytas and people talk about and Joy Graceffa say Colleen, and people would say, it's not Colleen, it's Colleen. Well, I think after 9 million videos that have been made about Colleen, Ballinger. We know that Colleen Ballinger is how it's, it, it's pronounced. So that's the one positive that came out of it for Miss Colleen Ballinger or Barringer. But anyway. I remember one. whenever I was like introducing her to my parents. My parents were all to me. They were like, who's Colleen? No, it's it's Colleen. It's Colleen Ballinger. It's Colleen Ballinger. It's Colleen Ballinger. And I was like, no, you don't get it. It's Colleen. Old, I'm assuming. Left this comment. By the way, my videos are marked for adults. They're, they're, they're marked, not made for kids. Just so you know that on all of my channels. Mine too. Channel of mine that is marked for kids. All of my channels are marked Mine too. For Fuck those kids. kids. Okay. So anyway. Fuck those kids. This like 12 year old, I think she probably was. She left this comment and the comment says, leave her alone, please. No, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. Okay. And, and thank you for being so polite and saying please. I appreciate that. But no, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I can't leave her alone. I can't. Okay. I, I can't stop talking. The about fucking fine. Yesterday, that um, I'm going to continue to talk about this until it is there's some kind of closure to this whole situation. And, and by closure, I'm not talking about Colleen Ballinger just fading off into the distance. Okay, I'm talking about uh, when she decides to work with these high-priced attorneys that she's hired to come out with some kind of very contrived statement and address this. Which a lot of people commented yesterday and said she doesn't want to do that because she knows that any move that she makes is going to be majorly challenged and criticized by everybody out there. Can I say something? First of all, love this era of Peter where he is just like going in on everyone. But can I be honest about something? This is 100% my speculation and I have nothing to back this up. But I was having a conversation with a journalist and it's a journalist that I'm not necessarily really close with, but like friendly terms with. And they were talking about Andrew Brettler's clientele and they were talking about how, you know, he has so many clients that he really rarely gives any of his clients, like, the, the proper response that they want because he's dealing with so many people. And they were also talking about the fact that 
they believe this is okay this is 100 percent speculation nothing to back this up they believe that colleen isn't even working with andre brettler anymore and that that colleen only worked with him by like an hour by hour uh slot to save money because we're aware this woman is cheap right but there are a lot of people behind the scenes right now that do not believe that Colleen has a lawyer anymore, like on call. Like she just has, you know, the the pay hourly rate, which I have found out in talking with this journalist that a lot of YouTubers do this mold. Um, and I don't know how accurate this is, but James Charles's name came up as well, where they'll pay for these big Hollywood lawyers that are so expensive for like an hour and then only work with them for like another hour because they're really, really, really expensive. And obviously the goal of these Hollywood lawyers is to make as much money as possible. And this is not something Colleen Ballinger could ever win or James Charles could ever win. So it seems like possibly people are saying behind the scenes that he was only hired for like an hour or two to, you know, silence a couple news articles and possibly work on the Vanity Fair one. 100% speculation, but it could be a big reason as to why there is 100% silence on her end as well. Um, Because surely a good lawyer would be getting you to get some sort of fucking statement out. But I guess from speculation behind the scenes, these YouTubers are only able to afford these lawyers for, you know, hour by hour slots because they're obnoxiously priced. So just something to note. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I can't leave her alone. I can't leave me alone. How about you leave me alone? Okay, if you don't like my videos about Colleen Ballinger, don't watch them. I don't know why anybody that is a super fan of Colleen Ballinger, unless you're trying to be convinced otherwise, okay, that you shouldn't be a fan, would watch a video. I love when he puts the finger out. Colleen Ballinger, this is very serious. Updates, okay? I don't know why you would watch that video. It's not like the video is called We Love You, Colleen Ballinger, okay? Love so it. Super fan of Colleen he Ballinger, talks like me. You would dedicate 56 minutes to a video that is just telling truth on Colleen Ballinger that you don't really want to hear. Why would you watch that video? And I think Peter Mon has been someone who, since the start of the... Oh my God, see, look, I'm like, since the start, has probably made the most accurate, level-headed, um, like, deep dive videos on Colleen, like, really, really, really good. Um, and I've given him so much credit for that publicly and privately whenever I've said this to him. I mean, his videos have been so spot on. I always loved his James Charles coverage. And I think he always did a really good job with that. And I think one thing that I hold a lot of respect to Peter for is Peter never let up with the James Charles grimming, you know, stories. Because he knew that James Charles would get away with it because people were getting tired of the topic. And he's saying that I'm not going to let history repeat itself by going easy on Colleen the way everyone else did on James. And now look, James is back, actually admitted to being a groomer and, you know, just has his career. So I will always give Peter credit for that. And I hope that enough people do as well, because I hope that people aren't overlooking the fact that he stays on these bitches asses and he sticks to his word and he fucking has integrity. And that's something I really respect him for. Okay, that's not a video that I would watch. You know what I'm saying? If I was a Colleen Ballinger, which trust, I am not. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to say. The next thing I wanted to say is there are a couple things I need to address. People commenting, making me aware about things that I say in my in my video, but you don't know that because you don't watch my whole video. Okay, so I got a lot of comments about different things yesterday from people saying, "Did you know that at the streamies, um, they made jokes about her ukulele apology?" Yes, I did know that because I actually mentioned that in my video yesterday. Did you know that Corey DeSoto posted a new picture on Instagram? Yes, I did know that. I actually mentioned that in my video yesterday. I feel him so much on this because this is one of the most... I think if you don't make content, you won't understand why this is something that really bothers a content creator. But it is one of the most annoying things whenever you like make an entire video and you touch on every topic and you're up to date and all the comments like, but you didn't address that. My... My mod Des was like, no, I get it as well. Whenever you, like, take the time to, like, cover everything and then people clearly don't watch the video and are like, but you didn't address this, this, this. And I'm like, bitch, if you watched. So I feel Peter 100%, 100% on this. I know that my videos are long, okay? Feel free to watch them at two times speed and hear me talk like, okay? Feel free. I watch them back at two times speed. So if I watch them back at two times speed, feel free to watch them at two times speed, okay? But needless to say, okay, 
But you might want to save your That was crazy. So you watch the whole video. And I usually do save some really good stuff till the very end of the video so that you have to watch the whole video, okay? I don't put the good stuff at the beginning, obviously. We know I have 10 minute intros. <laughs> I'm an intro channel now, okay? I save all the good stuff till the very end. So if you miss the very end, you're going to miss the good stuff, okay? He's so and real. You know how it all is in life. I'm just saying, okay? If you, if you don't wait till the very end, you're going to miss the good stuff in life. I'm just saying, okay? You know, like literally, it just gets better with age, I think. Life just gets better with age. So I just wanted to say that, first of all, okay? For all of you out there that want to inform me of things I've already said in my videos. Did you know? Yes, I know. I, I said it in my video. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for telling me things I should have put in my video that I already did. I appreciate that. The other thing I wanted to say is that there are people out there that are saying that people... I got this comment quite a bit on my video yesterday. Oh, by the way, this video will be linked down below. Is, uh, Colleen, than other people like James Charles, Okay. Now, Sorry, I spoke over him there. His video will be linked down below, but also, he's saying that people are accusing Peter of being harder on Colleen than what Peter was on James. No. <laughs> you don't want to poke- you don't want to poke Peter on that one, because Peter will- <laughs> I want to just say, I take great offense to this comment, alright? I think that I am a equal contributor to discussing- <laughs> is that the word I'm looking for? I- I am- I feel like- I talk just as much about James Charles and holding James Charles accountable and holding Trisha Paytas accountable and holding these other people accountable. I feel like I talk just as much about them as I do Colleen Ballinger. And when he takes those I glasses off. I made a Colleen Ballinger video in quite some time, which is why I felt like it was important to make that Colleen Ballinger video. Okay, now I don't know whose channel you're watching. I don't know if you're watching Judy Smith's channel. But if you're taking issue with Judy Smith's channel and you're coming to my channel, and com that's not the place to comment. Go comment on Judy Smith's channel and say, you don't ever hold James Charles accountable. But Peter Mon... On Peter Mon's channel, see if you see underneath this video, like I've said nine million times, it says Peter Mon. This is Peter Mon's channel. This isn't Judy Smith's channel, okay, or Sally Joe's channel. On Peter Mon's channel, Peter Mon is an equal opportunity, okay, over here. So if I'm gonna talk equal opportunity commentator <laughs> about Colin Ballinger Trust, I'm gonna talk about James Charles. And one of the things that really pisses me off, okay, is that I feel like people have easily forgotten James Charles, which is why I continue to talk about him. Yeah, talked a lot about James Charles in the last two months. So I don't know whose channel you're watching, but you ain't watching this channel, baby. Uh-uh. No, because on this channel, we talk a lot about James Charles over here, okay? And I think anybody that watches my channel regularly can sound off in the comment section below and say that's absolutely 100% true. And I think that's something that's so annoying as a content creator as well, when people clearly don't watch your videos but are trying to use something against you and they lie about things that you clearly do. So that for Peter being like, but you don't even talk about James. <laughs> Have you seen Peter's channel? <laughs> and that's a good thing. All right. So James deserves to get, get talked about. The meat and potatoes of the video, although that was kind of that was the appetizer, appetizer du jour. That was a French onion. Not meat and potatoes. Johnny trashback, trashback. Wow. Flashback. Okay. So let's get into this. That was Johnny whenever he was talking about his uh, grooming accusations on Josh, but then he was like, "Let's talk about the clean ones. Let's get back into the meat and potatoes." Your Honor, can we get into the meat and potatoes of my allegations? So, um, I got a comment. I don't know if I saved the comment or if I just kind of paraphrased it. Hold on, let me see. I mean, it wasn't a bad comment. It wasn't, like, a negative comment or anything like that. Um, oh, no, 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 here it is. But I just, I thought this was an important thing to address. I got this comment from several different people. This was the shortest comment. That's why I'm choosing to read it. But like I said, this wasn't, like, a nasty comment or anything like that. This was just an opinion, and I think it's an interesting opinion. And this person said she's not coming out and talking, okay, because I, I was talking about why she's not coming out and she's not addressing these allegations and things like that, right? This person said she's not coming out and talking because her legal team has told her not to. Obviously, she can't since there are so many accusations. Okay. Which I think is an interesting point of view, right? And I actually think it's a point of view that a lot of people hold. That a lot of people... The point he's going to make is really good. He goes on to say, Okay, the fans are saying that Colleen can't talk. And they're defending her by being like, She can't talk because her legal are advising her to. What did her legal also advise her not to do? <laughs> so... You know, so it's not something that stops her. She just doesn't want to come out and admit guilt. You know what I mean? He didn't say I couldn't say. <laughs> Fucking Ariana. <laughs> that Victoria's clip is so funny. People think that Colleen Ballinger cannot come out and talk about this because there's so many allegations and accusations, okay, <laughs> that have actual evidence and proof to them of her sending pictures to minors and her in group chats and things like that, right? Okay, but. To bring up uh, James Charles, since I was just talking about him, right, I think it's interesting that people forget that James Charles came out in his holding myself, accountable, uh, holding myself Accountable video, okay, 
admit it and agree with Oh, can I also let y'all in on the fact that the Corey's Click group chat is going to have some, like, revelations exposed soon? Um, one of the members exposed to me that Corey would send the Trisha nudes as well. And actually, I don't want to be misquoted here. I do not want to be misquoted. So let me exactly quote what someone from the group chat said. Because I am not being, I am not saying that I made something up or whatever. This is from a member of the Corey's clit group chat. Hold on. Here is, okay, hold on. Let me read this. So there's more coming out against Corey DeSoto soon. Here's part of the voice memo Corey sent when all of the grip chat messages were leaked around the time of your first video. This is all I've saved, but he did go on to say he was forced to leave the chat because things got leaked and Colleen was mad at him. Uh, this shows him befriending uh, minors and the ways he would manipulate us by saying he cared about us. Um, but all he cared about was us validating his every move. I say, oh my fucking God. After they sent the voice memo, they said, it's so insane looking back. I was 15 to 17 during the time of the grip chat. And there were at least two members that were younger than me. And the at the beginning, all the members were minors. I said, I'm so sorry. I can't even put that into words. That's crazy. They said, it's disgusting the shit that we all went through when we were so young. Thank you again for standing up and giving all of the victims a voice and validation. I wish I had more screenshots since I was in the group chat for so long. Um, but as you saw, we were always threatened not to leak anything because it would ruin our friendship or his career. And I was so scared that I deleted some. But then they went on to say that they find a lot of things. Um, I have members from that group chat who still support uh, Corey and they are in contact with him, texting me and attacking me for sharing that and twisting the story, which is not true. Thank you for sharing and validating my story because it's such a shit show. And then they respond and say to my Trisha Paytas video and say, just want you to know that Corey also sent us the same in Corey's clit. Um, although I have no proof, others member, other members do though, who don't want to speak up. But then they told me the members were going to speak up and they said, just want to let you know that Corey would edit our faces onto Trisha's body. So gross. I was 15. And then they sent me this. So do with that what you will. It was something that one of the members of Corey's clit told me. I cannot confirm or deny, but it is something that has been sent to me and screenshots were sent. So if that is correct, from what this person is saying, they told me that Corey was editing their face onto Trisha's body whenever they were like 15. So do with that what you will. Um, but I'm going to look into that a little bit further um, because other members have sent me screenshots. And if a bunch of the stories, um, I've also sent all this to Swip as well and we were talking about it and both of us are fucking horrified um and w i'm currently looking into validating as much as possible the information um and then i'm going to reach out to trisha and then um everything will be talked about online, but there are a lot of allegations against Corey DeSoto right now. Um, so we will see. Um, I cannot validate anything of what I just said. I literally cannot. I just read you messages from someone who was in the group chat. I cannot validate any of that. I cannot stress that enough. However, the members of the grip chat are coming to me privately, sending screenshots and stuff. So I just read you out what they sent to me. I just read you out what they sent to me. So we'll look into that, figure out if it's true. Look into the screenshots. There are screenshots of these of these you know photos and stuff. Um, we will look into them, figure out a little bit more, and. We'll see, but the members of the group chat are saying that this did happen, and they are posting screenshots and sending them. So we will figure out if that is true, and we will update you. So why he took that video down was because he realized that he had admitted to criminal acts in that video, okay? But he did. And he said that he was doing these things with underage people, okay? And um, they didn't press charges. Now, I am, I am confused as to why 
that law has never gotten involved, okay? Knowing that these things have happened. This is by James why Charles. Why somebody has to press charges, knowing that an illegal act has happened, is beyond me, okay? That, that's the one thing that confuses me about it. Unless nobody has reported this to the, the police or legal or things like that, which I can't believe with James Charles, right? But James Charles came out in his Holding Myself Accountable video, and he admitted to doing those things, okay? He admitted to having inappropriate sexual conversations with two with minors. Whether he knew about their age or not, he had those conversations, okay? Found out that they were younger and continued to have conversations with other people that then he found out they were younger as well. He admitted to that, okay? James Charles took that video down and then he did a video called Open Conversation, which is a get ready with me, okay? Now, in that video, he blames a, a, commentate, a commentary channel, basically Deaf Noodles, okay? For listing all of these alleged fake allegations against James Charles. Okay? Even though he admitted to doing it to two of the boys who were like 16 or 14. Route, so that's his escape route, okay? So Peter's point here is for people saying that Colleen cannot come back and address it because she'd be admitting guilt. The point he's making is really good that I haven't seen anyone else make, which is we have another creator, James Charles, that literally admitted to being a groomer and said that he was messaging kids, like two of them for a fact, and nothing ever happened. So there's nothing stop stopping Colleen Ballinger for com from coming forward and admitting that she is a groomer because we already know she's one. But he's making this great point, which is like, for the people saying she can't come forward because she's, you know, damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. Well, James Charles admitted to being a grimmer publicly. Get out of all this and say there's all these fake allegations and kind of blames it on that, right? But he still, in that video, reiterates what he said in the Holding Myself Accountable video and refers to them as victims, okay? So James Charles came out in two videos and he w made himself a self-proclaimed predator and nothing legal has ever happened to James Charles, I don't give a shit, okay? What kind of legal advice Colleen Ballinger is being given? If any. James Charles wasn't held accountable for this. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. A lot of people speculate that he paid people off, that he did this, that he did that, whatever, okay? He came out in two videos and self-proclaimed, all right? Are you telling me that Colleen Ballinger cannot come out in a video and make a blanket state apology? Um, or, you know, blank, what's the word I'm looking for? A blanket apology? Um, not specifically talking about any detailed issue, and also reach out to Adam McIntyre and apologize to he and his parents with a blanket apology. In Adam's video that he just did about Corey DeSoto, he said, okay, because he believes that Corey is testing the waters with his Instagram picture for Colleen to come out because she's wanting to come out before, I thought this was a very interesting take, and I have to say, I think there's probably some truth to this. Colleen's testing the waters to see if she can come out, okay, of hiding and be on social media because she wants to get out and start telling her story before her ex-husband. The problem with that is Swip's Josh interview is a bite to drop, literally, I think next week, I think next week, and I was talking to Swip um, about this a couple days ago. I think next week. I don't know if it is, you know, obviously dates change and stuff, but I think it's coming out next week. Um, not next week is in tomorrow. Not that, but like next week. Because next week is Labor, tomorrow is Labor Day weekend. So all of America is like chilling. Um, so I think the week after that, um, maybe wrong, maybe not. Don't know. Um, but anyway, so Colleen, you know, has to worry about the fact that the Josh interview is dropping and Corey has to worry about the fact that some things he's done with minors are possibly going to be validated and leaked. And if what Corey DeSoto is being accused of is correct, that is taking what Colleen did to me and Johnny and adding 10 more crimes on top of it. If it's true that he was editing children's faces onto Trisha's body, if that's true, the members of the group chat are telling me privately it is. I read out their message. I didn't make any of that shit up. Listen, I don't know what they're doing. I'm just reading out a message I got from them. I have not validated it, have not looked into it. I will. But what I'm saying is Colleen has to worry about the Josh interview and Corey better hope that he never did this. Corey better hope his ass he never did this. But I'm going to reach out to a couple more members of the group chat and see if there's an overall similar story and if they all have screenshots the way a couple do and if they can validate. So Corey better hope that it's not true. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying I hope it's not true. Um, but if it is, Corey has to worry about that and Colleen has to worry about something else. Also, it's just crazy to me that her kids are going to grow up and realize that, like, 
their mother groomed kids. I know that's such a harsh thing to say because the kids are innocent in this, but because she allowed her ego to take over for so long in silence, she allowed so many of her victims to speak up, and now whenever her kids Google her, they're going to realize what she's done to other kids. I don't even care that I'm bringing her kids up on it because, you know, she brought my mom's kid into it, so I really don't care. Josh David Evans interview comes out on Swoop, okay? So Corey, who is her best friend, is testing the waters for her. Now, Adam McIntyre did a very extensive video about that yesterday. Very. Okay? And he talked about all of the, the issues with Corey DeSoto, and I'm not going to get into all of that today, right? And all the things that were horrible about Corey DeSoto. But what he said in there was that he had said months ago on Twitter that if Colleen Ballinger, okay, and Corey DeSoto apologized publicly and privately to he and his parents, that he would no longer speak about it again. They had. I just think it's crazy to think about that. Like, if they had made a blanket, even not even meaning it, which it obviously wouldn't have been, apology privately and publicly, even a blanket one back then, like a couple months ago, you wouldn't be watching this. The Trisha Nid thing wouldn't have came out. Um, the Johnny revival probably wouldn't have happened. The Josh thing probably wouldn't have came out. Um, and I'm not saying that that's all because, you know, I would have gotten an apology and it's all great. But Colleen really relied on the fact that people either didn't or did listen to me, right? Because for a certain fact for three years i was the only fucking one speaking right and thank god everyone else feels that they're you know comfortable and that they can speak up now and that's been one of the biggest positives to come from this but what i'm saying is before everyone spoke up you know in 2023 there was still a couple weeks where it was like me and cody you know besties just on our own and if colleen had shut me up back then Who's to say that, you know, it would have been a, a similar climate for like 2020 for anyone else that would have spoken up because it would have been like, oh, but she's already apologized again. You're just you're jumping on a hate mob. Then it would have been if if Becky had spoken up, who's to say Becky wouldn't have got the the treatment I got in 2020 because Colleen had issued an apology or something like that. So I'm not saying that me getting an apology would have changed everything. But what I am saying is if it was done at that time. I would have shut up and the topic on my end would have died. And at that stage in June of 2020 or 2023, it was only me and Cody speaking up. Then it was a couple of weeks. Then it was Johnny and then um, Becky and Oliver and Ella and Alex, you know, then it was a couple of weeks after that. So if that if me and Cody had been shut up at the start it would have been a more dangerous climate like it was back for me in 2020 for anyone else to speak up. But Colleen was too egotistical to think about that. And now look what's happened and she fucking deserves it. I've done that, okay? So we made it very, very clear that if she comes out with- And thank God, by the way, in a way that she didn't, because look how therapeutic it's probably been for so many people to be listened to about their their stories that they've been literally holding on to for years. Like people are speaking up about stories that happened in in like 2012 or 2013 or 2014. They've been holding on to that. So for better or for worse, on me not getting my fucking apology, it means that this topic was never dying down, and we were able to support each other and lift each other up and i'm so fucking proud of all of them for speaking up and i know that they say that about me as well well not johnny but you know it's a case of like fuck we're all on this together and queen made a big mistake by not just sucking it up and doing a shitty apology because it would that's all i wanted from the start was some sort of acknowledgement and then it'll light it it to blow up and in the process of it blowing up a lot of other people had some things to say about her. Blanket apology in a video, but she doesn't apologize to he and his parents individually, then he will continue to talk about it. But if she does and covers her bases, then that will be silencing him. And he, he's thinking that maybe that's her tactic, okay? Well, why doesn't she just come out? If she wants to shut Adam McIntyre up so badly, why doesn't she just come out and do this that? This is my it's point. Like she has to say, I'm sorry for this and this and this and this and this. Now, I think that would be fantastic because that's called taking amends. She really wants to talk about being a changed person in her 2020 video, okay? You want to be a changed person and make amends? Then detail the wrongs of your past. Take responsibility for them and show by your action that it won't happen again, okay? 
But Adam basically says she could come out with a public blanket apology and also apologize to my parents and myself with some kind of blanket apology. And that would have to suffice because I came out and said that on a tweet. True. Okay? I will stick to my fucking word. I will stick to my word. I will stick to my word. Which I think is interesting that you have a 20, almost 21 year old kid that is holding himself to the integrity of a tweet that he put out months ago, okay? When he has been just bombarded with hate and negativity from people that are Colin Ballinger super fans, okay? He is still holding himself to the integrity of what he tweeted out months ago. There's a lot of people that say, fuck that tweet. I don't give a shit what I said three months ago. Uh uh. She ain't come out and spoke yet. I'll keep, I'll keep on speaking for as long as I want to. But that shows the integrity of Adam McIntyre, okay? For all of you out there that want to question that. That he's sitting there saying, I tweeted this out, so if she does these things, then I guess I'm, I have to be good to my word, That's sweet. right? But you have a 37-year-old woman that can't even be good to her own word, okay? Where's the maturity in this situation? It's with Adam McIntyre, Becky, Oliver. It's with the youth. It's with the victims, okay? That's where you're seeing a lot of maturity. While these people are trying to go to college and move through their life and have careers and enjoy their life, while having to reshare over and over and over traumatic experiences that happened. Love, Peter. Can you even imagine how difficult that is? I mean, the amount of comments that I received in my video yesterday from people saying that they have been survivors of similar situations and that they carried it with them through the majority of their life and they really feel sorry for these victims because even if they get their truth told or even if they get some kind of, you know, redemption for Colin Ballinger, they're still going to carry this with them for a very long time. You know, no payoff in the world is worth that. I mean, the implications of how hard-hitting and deep this has gone is really, really sad, you know? So I just wanted to say that. Um, so people saying that she can't come out legally and talk about it. Well, James Charles came out. And, and that's not true, okay. by the way. Is anybody pursuing Colin Ballinger legally right now? No, not that we're aware of. If that, if that happened, every lawyer on YouTube, every drama commentary channel would be talking about it, okay? Nobody is pursuing Colin Ballinger legally right now, okay? So why can she not come out and talk about it? I'm confused, okay? Because legal's telling her not to. Well, didn't they also tell her not to come out with a ukulele apology video, but she chose to do that. So, Colleen Ballinger can't make up her own decisions. She's hiding behind this attorney, but the only thing he's good for is coming out and differentiating between blackface and greenface, you know? Isn't it crazy that that's the only thing that he has done? That's the, She's hired this high-profile lawyer for pedos and predators, and... The only thing he's done is go on the record and say, Your Honor, my client put on green face paint. That's the only thing he has said. Oh, okay. That's what you hired this expensive attorney for or to defend you in case somebody did come for you. This is going to stop him a second. Okay, I'm back. Well, she hired a defense lawyer, which a defense lawyer is in, in the chance that we get light enough that we are able to like legally take her dying because she's fucking petrified because she knows that she's guilty as fuck so anyway um oh sorry don't forget he said that she didn't put the song on itunes oh thank you for letting me know that you know and the other thing that's interesting to me is oh hold on sorry this is kind of thing is that a couple people mentioned this in my video yesterday about like part of the problem you know because i talk a lot about the influencer friends and things like that that part of the problem isn't just the influencer friends or the people the fans enabling them but part of the problem is the platforms and i've been thinking this for a long time you know it's interesting to me because i went and i looked over at netflix okay netflix still has both i honestly cannot believe that netflix didn't make any sort of statement not anything to do with us but just honestly to do with the fact that like the show is still in the four kids category like your show that has the worst sexual innuendos ever. Like not even funny sexual innuendos or not even ones that would go over kids' heads. One where you're literally like in insinuating that your uncle is like, whatever. And it's in the four kids thing. Mm. Of Colleen Ballinger's shows up there. It has haters back off and it has her live show. Yeah, her live show in which she was being called out for. The one that is exploiting minors. That's up there. Okay. Her live show, which has been highly, highly criticized. Okay. I also went on there and looked to see if they had House of Cards with Kevin Spacey. Interestingly enough, Netflix still has House of Cards with Kevin Spacey. Okay. Um, so all the allegations against Kevin Spacey, don't, they don't feel like they need to pull that down and take that down. You know, when actors and actresses are black, mostly actors are blacklisted and can never be in another show or movie. But does that mean that Netflix only cares about the money? Well, obviously. Okay. Since they raise their prices and they do all these other shenanigans with... Oh my god, that is so annoying about Netflix as well, by the way. I have tried to watch Netflix on my TV, my iPad, and my phone, and it's, like, stopping me 
from watching it on my fucking TV because it's like you've already you're already logged in on too many devices. And I'm like, but I'm one person. I hate you, Netflix. With, you know, Apple, for many Apple, reasons. Like Plus, by the way, Netflix, since I've said this on my blog and I've said this on a lot of my other channels, your streaming service has turned to shit, okay? You've only got about three good shows on your thing. You don't ever put up any good documentaries anymore. And I'm telling you right now, Max and Apple TV are where it's at. Paramount, Peacock are pretty good. Netflix, pff, you're down the toilet, okay? And that's how people say it in Northern Indiana. They say toilet. They don't say toilet. Netflix, you're down the toilet, okay? And you're even further down the toilet because you're leaving these problematic people's shows up on your channel because the only thing you care about is making money, okay? And if you're under contract to keep these shows up, then those might be contracts that you would want to have your legal fight against, okay? And if you don't have this disclaimers in your contract that say we have the right to remove any show but also i don't really think that there's any contract there because it wouldn't be like oh the show has to be up for five years or anything because all these shows have expired that anyway you know what i mean and there's also breakout clause where if your company is getting so much backlash then and also can we not forget that the worker on net on the netflix show haters back off literally spoke about her time working on the haters back off show with how racist the production team were the the racist things that colleen would say allegedly and the um what else was it just how much of a fucking shitty person she was to work with but also the racism allegations like netflix silent if such and such happened like people that have sexual misconduct allegations okay that might be a reason why Netflix should take down those shows, but they don't care at all, do they? Okay. So, uh, you know, but the other thing is, is that all of these people, James Charles, Colleen Ballinger, all of them, they have accounts on YouTube, they have accounts on Twitter, they have accounts on Instagram, they have accounts on TikTok, they have many, many ways to continue to make money, they have many, many ways to have a platform, okay? Uh, somebody said to me yesterday in my comment section, they said, you have no right to say who should be deplatformed. Um, first of all, this is Peter Mon's channel. Peter Mon's Wait, you know what I just realized? Got a beast inside and I'm waking it up. His fan says beast because his full thing is beast. Peter. Got a beast inside and I'm waking it up. I got a beast inside. If you're not a regular watcher of me, you have no fucking idea what that means. And if you don't, fuck you. Got a beast inside. Wait. Come on now. Look at me. I'm a beast, baby. Dun, 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 dun will say whatever he wants to say. I have every right on my channel to say what I want to say. When YouTube gives a channel and a platform to self-proclaimed predators to continue to make money and have a thriving career and million dollar houses in California, you better best believe, okay, that Peter Mon can get on his channel and say that somebody has a, deserves to be deplatformed. I have every right to say that, okay? When YouTube does not want to take any kind of responsibility for- When did he put the glasses people, back on? Their platform is their power. If they did not have a platform anymore, okay? If James Charles and Colleen Ballinger did not have Twitter, did not have Instagram, did not have YouTube, did not have TikTok, and had no ways to interact with these people, okay? Through group chats on TikTok or Twitter, through YouTube videos, through TikToks, through hitting people up on Instagram and TikTok DMs and things like that, okay? Or contacting them in Twitter DMs. If they didn't have any of those platforms and those platforms took- It would stop kids being fucking hurt. It's me giving a round of applause. Hold on. The platforms are at the responsibility as well for allowing and giving the power for them to be able to abuse kids. Stand against people that had sexual misconduct allegations, their being deplatformed would remove their power from hurting other people. They would have to work really, really hard to continue to hurt other people. So I don't think it's a huge stretch to ask for those people to be deplatformed. I'm sorry, I don't, okay? We got to further me me uh, measures with normal people, in, maybe not normal, but just everyday regular people that are accused of the same things. But Colleen Ballinger and James Charles, because they're celebrities on the internet, it's too much to ask that their power of having a platform is taken away when they have abused their power and abused their platform. I think that's the least that should happen. I mean, are you kidding me? Does an apology really mean that much from Colleen Ballinger when she came out in an apology in 2020 and lied through her teeth and edited videos, which somebody else wanted to inform me she edited that video in 2020. Yes, sweetheart, I said that in my video yesterday. Okay, but thank you for informing me that. I went into depth about that. You know, but she comes out in this apology video in 2020 and she... He said, don't fucking mess with me today. <laughs> he said, I've already talked about that. <laughs> Completely lies to her teeth and turns the end of it all about her that she wants to be able to move on and things like that. Well, baby, didn't nobody stop you from having to be in group chats and continue your problematic behavior that you continued up till just recently. Okay, that was your opportunity for growth, as my sponsor in recovery says. This is an opportunity for growth. Are you going to take it or not? I guess you chose not to, you know? You want to stand behind being a wife and being a mother and how that's made you a changed person, but you continue to do these behaviors even after being a mother and being a wife. So no, that didn't change you, Colleen. I don't know that you are changeable. I'm 
I'm not a psychiatrist, so I'm not going to sit here like people in the comment sections, which I kind of live for, and speculate diagnosis about you. But sweetheart, I will di I will speculate to say that you got one or two maybe diagnoses. Okay, I don't know what they are, but you need some fixing and fixing good. Okay, and I'm not talking about going in the kitchen and fixing supper. I'm talking about you need to be seeing some professionals. Okay, and there ain't no shame in that, Colleen. I've seen professionals for a very long time. I talk about it on a lot of my channels. Okay, but sweetheart, you need some help. Okay, you need some real help because you obviously don't think that anything that you've done is wrong. And in 2020, you came out with this piss-ass apology where you lied through your teeth. And in 2023, you came out with the ukulele, and then you hid behind your attorneys, okay? That's not fixing anything. What's your plan? Just be gone forever? Okay, I don't think you think anybody would be gone, wrong with, upset about that, except for maybe your super fans that are all under the age of 12. But why don't you come out, then at least let the victims know, this is- He has not taken a breath. My last video. I'm not going to speak on this. I've been advised not to speak on this, but I'm not coming back to YouTube. Give them some freedom, Okay. Put out a tweet. Put out an Instagram something, girl. Okay, seriously? Let these people have some effing closure. Seriously? You don't even have the decent... You're telling me your attorneys won't let you come out and put a one-sentence statement that says, I cannot talk about any of these situations per my legal counsel, but just to let you know, I am not returning to YouTube. Period. To let these people have closure. To let everybody... I think that's a good point. I'm not even saying her having to be like... I'm not coming back to YouTube, but it's really interesting that like she won't even put out a statement that's like, I'm not going to talk about this per my legal advice, right? Like it is crazy and him him phrasing that, like I'm not saying about the her being like, I'm leaving the internet, but like being like, I'm not, I can't talk about this per legal advice. Like to just sit in silence further shows how guilty you are, but like it's crazy that like we haven't even gotten that. Hmm. Everybody involved have closure and move on. And you can move on too and go on with your life. Why is that so much to ask? It's a joke, right? So then let's talk about our good genie, Joey Graceffa, who just recently unfollowed her. Now I have to tell you, I think behind the scenes there was some bitterness that occurred. And also, sorry, Joey Graceffa. Um, if you strip back the toxic gossip train lyrics, right? She admits to being a grimmer and she admits to being inappropriate with fans. If you put those lyrics on a sheet of paper, no ukulele, no memeable with it, she admits to things. Because she can't not admit to things she's done. Okay? I think there was some argument that happened with Colleen Ballinger and Joey Graceffa. Now, I'm not really sure how that um, argument occurred, but I have a feeling it had something to do with Colleen Ballinger asking a favor from Joey Graceffa to basically re-saint her or something like that because Joey Graceffa is seen as so clean on the internet. No, he's not. Joey Graceffa, don't, and don't ask me to stop talking about uh, Joey Graceffa, please leave Joey Graceffa alone because the same 12 year olds that love Co Colleen Ballinger love Joey Graceffa, okay? They love the Daniels, Joey Graceffa and Daniel. Joey Graceffa and Daniel Prada haven't been together in years and probably never really were, okay? I hate to break it to you, but the rumor in the, around Hollywood is that Joey Graceffa and Daniel Prada are the fakest relationship that ever existed and they were never really together. It was him just randomly dropping this in the video. <laughs> I'm just randomly saying this. All just to help Joey Graceffa come out and paint this fairy tale picture of him. And y'all bought into it. Y'all a bunch of fools that bought into the whole Daniel thing, okay? What? They just one day decided they weren't in love anymore and they, they didn't never went to marriage camp. They had the most fantastical fairy tale love in the entire world. They one time just decided to split up. Where oh, someone pissed him off today. <laughs> I'll get all his money to buy his house in West Hollywood and all his gardening and put out a video once every two weeks. Where do you think Daniel got his money for that? They weren't in a common law marriage. Joey Graceffa owed him nothing. Was there a contract that he got paid in? How much money do you think he made off that Escape the Night as a producer? Not much, okay? Where do you think Daniel got all that money, okay? Oh, but they parted ways because they weren't in love with each other anymore, but they stayed really close friends to where they still raise dogs together and Daniel decorates Joey's romantical bedroom. Are y'all fools? Are you so stupid that you bought into this whole relationship? I'm telling you right now, okay? Years ago, people were telling me that that relationship was fake. Everybody in YouTube knows that that relationship is fake. They, people have been telling me that for years, okay? So something happened, but- cause Joey And then he just goes back to talking about Colleen. <laughs> Yeah, that statement's so funny. How much money do you think he made in Escape the Night? Not much! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Ooh, whoever wrote that comment that pissed him off. Ooh, look what he started. Graceffa is seen as this, you know, oh, people just love Joey Graceffa and whatever. And I think Pauline Ballinger asked him to do a favor or something. He said, no, girl, I'm going to have to unfollow you and save my own ass, okay? Because this is where you think these people are so good. Joey Graceffa waited two and a half, three months before he unfollowed Pauline Ballinger. Fuck okay? Joey Graceffa. I hate now, Joey Graceffa. Joey Graceffa, he still follows Corey DeSoto. So it's not that he has a problem with predators, per se, okay? Because he still follows James Charles as well. It's not that he has a problem, and his, his ex-boyfriend, best friend, Daniel Prada, just went to uh, James Charles' painted launch. So it's not that they have a problem with predators, okay? It's that it was hurting their career to be that close to Colleen Ballinger. So what's the softest move that he can do, okay? 
is that he can unfollow Colin Ballard on Instagram. It's weak, okay? And don't, like I said, don't ask me. Please leave Joey Graceffa alone. No, I can't. I'm sorry. Joey Graceffa is boring. He is. He's a boring turd. Sorry. He's a boring turd. So is his ex, Daniel Prada. He's a boring turd, too, okay? They're all of them boring turds, okay? And I'm, I'm tired of faking it and acting like, oh, there's so interesting. Who'd care, okay? Joey Graceffa, he's boring. He's boring, okay? Boring. 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 You know, listen, I might not have that kind of audience that the subscriber count that he has, but my subscriber count is old enough that they're going to continue to ace it, okay? <laughs> Joey Graceffa's audience is... Joey, boring! <laughs> about 15, 14 years old, okay? When they grow up and get wise enough and they realize that not everybody goes to Tokyo 15 times a year and has, um, you know, their ex-boyfriend come over, I wouldn't want my ex-boyfriend in my bedroom, per personally, okay? I don't care how good of friends we were. I wouldn't want my ex-boyfriend. First of all, your ex-boyfriend that you never got into couples counseling with, but you were so in love and painting this picture that you were so in love for years, y'all never tried to save the relationship, but then just poof, instantly, like a Jaclyn Hill fart idea, y'all just decide that you're gonna start raising dogs together and that Daniel's gonna remodel your house. No, girl, I'm not buying it, okay? Y'all are fakety fakety. You're all phony. You're one of those fake relationships on YouTube that were just trying to garner views and subscribers, okay? And people bought into it and it worked for you for a very long time. So whatever, good for you, okay? But I think there was some bitterness that happened with Joey Graceffa and Colin Ballinger. Boring! She asked him for a favor, or I think he said, I have to unfollow you, and she got bitter as hell about it, or something like that, right? Save his career. Because he did this video, a dog video on his vlog channel, okay? And at the end of the vlog channel, he's talking to his cat underneath his table, which, you know, and. Uh, I saw this. This this bothered me. Someone brought this up on stream yesterday, and they were they weren't even saying it in like a pro Joy Graceffa way. Wait, maybe they were. I can't remember. They were like, Adam, you need to see like Joy Graceffa made fun of Colleen at the end of his vlog, and I looked it up, and it was he like made a joke about his cat being canceled, and he was like, better bring out the ukulele, and everyone's like, oh my god, Adam, Joy Graceffa's made a big stance against Colleen, and I'm like, okay, let me look. And then it's that, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're... <sighs> really? Joey Graceffa, who refused to denounce Colleen Ballinger for three months, but an ire within Gabby Hanna being dragged upon online had a fucking ire long expose of her up, because public opinion was against her, and it benefited, her, benefited him to be against Gabby Hanna. I'm not even the biggest Gabby Hanna fan. Love those songs, though. What if I'm a monster? You know. He was quick to jump on that train, literally. Uh, but with Colleen, you know, not so quick. So I do not respect Joey Graceffa whatsoever. At all. I really don't. And I don't appreciate him making a ukulele joke. And I'm not going to fucking be like, ha, 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 so funny. Oh my god, he denounced her. When people were like, Oh my god, Adam, you gotta see this. And I'm like, really? The standard is so low. Pick yourself up off the grind. This cat. I mean, this looks like a scene. Joey, Teen boring! <laughs> I love that movie, Teen, Teen Witch, so bad. Do you love that movie? Oh my god, I love that movie, Teen Witch, so much. Okay. I used to watch that when I was growing up. Do you guys remember that movie, Teen Witch? Oh my god. I think that might have been the first movie even before. Did it come out before Pretty, Pretty Woman? I don't know. Pretty Woman. Yeah, Pretty Woman has some of the best lines in the entire world. Like, I love this movie. Walking so down the so street, bro. Wait. I love that movie. Wait. I don't think my mom's still watching. Mom, was Pretty Woman the movie that was shot on the street that we stayed in in LA? Is Pretty Woman about Wilshire Avenue? Or wait, Wilshire Boulevard? Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? Rodeo Drive. Okay. Yeah, we stayed, like, um, we stayed on, um, Rodeo Drive. Not literally, but, like, our hotel was right outside it. Did you know that there's a pretty woman under Ocean Boulevard? But Teen Witch, when she does that makeover whole situation, I think that might be the, the first ever makeover <laughs> in the worst movie ever made. But anyway, the rap battle in Teen Witch still kills me to this day. Okay, I have this good Judy. We've been friends since I like first came out. I mean, true story, we slept together. I had a McIntyre monster compilation. Did one of my mods delete that? I was reading that. I was reading that. Des, I was reading that. <laughs> God, I forgot about this. Did you know that the Oh my god, someone's made a playlist every Adam McIntyre video by Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Got a new one for you. God, I remember this. Three years ago? 13th of July. Cause what if she's the monster? Why is my voice lower? <laughs> Three years ago. That's been here all along. Oh my god, pre-lip filler. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. The monster. That's been here all along. So Wait, my lips don't look that different. Actually, yeah, they do. <laughs> what if I'm the monster? Why is there so many? Oh my god, my voice cracked. Please, monster. Please, monster. Please, badly. So far away from here. Clearly, they're the one. They're I'm the one. They're a monster. That's been here all along. I'm so happy. That's crazy. We decided that maybe one gonna work. I mean, that's what happened. I thought he was so cute. He still is kind of cute. Brutal woman. Woman. Brutal woman. And the sex really wasn't that good. But that's beside the point. So anyway, but every once in a while, he has such a hilarious sense of humor. Every once in a while, he throws up a picture on his Instagram of those two, of those two rap battling it out in Teen Witch. I love that so much. What is my What is my cover of my powerful new memoir okay and then it goes to the next picture and it says let me pull this up so y'all can see it it says get your ukulele ready you're so over that's on joey Grisepa's joey book. boring him coming for colleen ballinger okay now i just want to say i've been saying this for a long time and no this is not well it is kind of and i told you some moment it is, though, it is kind of an I, this video is going to be so damn long today. We're already at 45 minutes. It is kind of an I told you something. I don't care if this video is an hour and 15 minutes. It's going to be what it's going to be today. So anyway, but, you know, this is how it always starts with all them, right? First, they're laughing at the person, okay? Like, oh, and you did it at my birthday dinner. They're laughing at them, okay? And then it turns into laughing with them, where it's like a joke of Colleen talking about her ukulele. Like, at some point, Colleen will start joking about Not and you did it at my and, birthday dinner. You no, know, like, she'll come out with an apology video and hold up a ukulele and so say no. That's and you did it at my birthday dinner. And then what she's doing is she's like, oh, this is awful. Well, like, and then it's like, laughing at Colleen. It's Fall. like, Colleen. Which is exactly what we saw happen with James Charles, okay? With the, and you did it at my birthday dinner. Now somebody gives him that birthday cake at his birthday. Daniel Prada, Joy Grisepa's ex, puts that picture up on his own birthday, uh, his post on Instagram. Because they all think it's real funny now, right? They think that sexual predator allegations are funny. I don't know what the humor is in that, okay? Now, I watch a lot of comedians. I don't hear a lot of punchlines about sexual misconduct and sexual allegations. Not the fun. Funny, but apparently in Hollywood and YouTube, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's so common out there. Maybe Daniel Prada, Joey Grisep, and all these people, Manny MUA, Lipstick Nick, all these people, maybe they got things to hide too. I don't know, you know? Like, I mean, that's the only thing you can maybe think because they find so much humor in these things. I, I don't understand. I don't find humor in it. I don't think it's funny at all. I think it's rather serious, honestly. That people are really, really seriously affected and hurt by this and might have to live with that for the rest of their lives. I don't care if it was two, which it was, with James Charles that he admitted to, or if it was 20 people, okay? Those two people out there that were affected by James Charles will carry that with them for the rest of their lives. So to make a joke about it, Daniel Prada, on your Instagram is disgusting. You are disgusting, okay? That you make a joke about that. That you, as a gay man, that should be a good role model in the LGBTQIA plus community, you are making a joke, okay? That is furthering the stigma of gay men as pedophiles. You think that is funny? James Charles thinks that's funny. You are, and now, now we got Joey Graceffa making a joke about it, okay? We got three gay men, Manny MUA as well, four gay men prominent on YouTube, okay? That think that sexual allegations like this are funny. Speaking of Manny MUA, I ratioed that fucker yesterday. It was a very proud moment. And you did it at my birthday dinner. But I can't help falling. Look. I'm just out for blood now that he unfollowed me. He said, 2016 is shaking. He got 2,000 likes. And I quoted it and said, nobody moved actually. And it got 5,000 likes. He 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 he. Also, Tana Mojo quoted my tweet, right? Did you ratio me? I'm scared that I got ratioed by Tana Mojo. Hold on. If I got ratioed by Tana Mojo, I'm... Yes! She didn't ratio me. I would be so embarrassed if Tana Mojo ratioed me. 
especially because I'm Team Cynthia. I got 5,000 on this tweet. She got 2,000 by quoting me. If Tana ratioed me, I'm sure night for Cynthia. I'm sure night for Cynthia. I'm sure night for Cynthia. Oh my god, my tweet about Gilmore Girls is going... Gilmore Girls? Gilmore Girls is going crazy. Everyone's telling me to watch it. A lot of my friends told me it's actually really boring. Oh, here's someone else is saying it's a little boring. I find the characters to be... Someone said, it's very much so generational trauma. <laughs> generational trauma. <laughs> generational trauma. <laughs> I'm literally crying because I thought about doing the joke before I did it. <laughs> generational trauma. <laughs> trauma. PTSD, trauma, generational trauma. Be better role models for your community, okay? You want to know why people don't take you very seriously anymore? This is why people don't take you very seriously anymore. I'm about to add some people to your list, okay? So it's just a matter of time before Colleen comes out and makes some joke about the ukulele, and then they all make a joke about a ukulele. It's all real funny to everybody, right? Okay. So now let's talk about Corey DeSoto's new... The ukulele uh, jokes will be funny until Colleen makes one. Then we're going to be like, damn it, it's not funny anymore. ...photo that he posted on Instagram, Okay. And I talked about this a little bit in my video yesterday. Oh, he's got another one up here now. What is this one? I was, this, is where he was. this is about Corey DeSoto posting on Instagram now. At some comedy show yesterday. Who'd care? Nobody. Okay, so he posted this picture. Now, he hasn't posted a picture since May 11th. And this picture, where I'll be honest with you when, you, when you stand down on it, it looks like he don't got no underpants on. <gasps> my lord! Okay? But he posted this picture right here, okay? The shirtless picture of himself. Now, I don't know who told him that this was a good idea, that when you're in the middle of um, sexual misconduct allegations, which he was out alleged to have been involved in these group chats and had been involved in the other allegations as well, not to mention that he was... Is Colleen Ballinger's best duty that was enabling all of this and pushing her to do a lot of these things. But he was a big part of all this. Go watch Adam McIntyre's video from yesterday where he covers it because he talks about it at length. Okay. So I don't know who Corey DeSoto's PR person is. Uh, maybe Colleen Ballinger's attorney. I mean, he's the one that represents. He's no, I think it's Colleen Ballinger. I don't know who would um, tell. Can we get some tomatoes? Uh, DeSoto that it was a good idea in the middle of a. Um, what do you call it? In the middle of a. Uh, these allegations of sexual misconduct to post a thirst trap picture. Okay. Girl, that's kind of weird. I'm just saying. It's kind of weirdly. It is. And it I, is. It's not even kind of weirdly. It's kind of inappropriate, you know? And I honestly, when I saw it, I thought, now, has his, his gravy train with Colin Ballinger run out? Now, I, I saw that he's on a couple D-list movies, one that Todrick Hall produced or something. Todrick Hall, he's probably not. Hate Todrick Hall as well. I really, really, really hate Todrick Hall. This is not a safe space for Katie Morton, Joey Graceffa, Todrick Hall, Corey DeSoto, Colleen Ballinger. Sorry, I was just thinking of Johnny, Cody, yeah. Oh, Glozell, yeah. You know what? And I would have invited Glozell last week as well, which is upsetting. Attic as hell, too, okay? And I know this, and he's kind of a common denominator in all this. Because I know that in Colleen Ballinger's 2020 video, she mentioned Todrick Hall, okay, in discussing racism. No, Jeffrey is okay, because I really want to try yak me, and I think the only way I can is if, like, I befriend Jeffrey a little bit. But once I get the yak me, you know, he'll be... Safe space. Now, underneath this picture, Todrick Hall has commented underneath here, okay? If you go down here, hold on a second. Um, somebody sent this to me. Now, wh wh why can't I find it on here? Oh, I think that Todrick Hall liked the picture. Todrick Hall liked the picture underneath here. Oh, no, he commented. Put four red hearts, okay? Now, y'all know Todrick Hall, okay? He has had his m most problematic past, okay? So here you got problematic, 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 hanging out with each other, okay? Now, what was interesting to me about this picture that I couldn't figure out was, now, can somebody explain to me why Glozell Green is underneath here? Okay, now, I love Glozell Green. I'm gonna have to unfollow her as well. Glozell Green, in his limited comments, okay, he only allowed 17 comments. Yesterday it was 15, now it's 17. Glozell Green comments underneath here, and it says, excellent, XOXO. And I'm like, girl. Okay. Not Glozell! Now, I know you're an OG of YouTube, but maybe vet people out, okay? Y'all, when people say, well, maybe Glozell doesn't know. Well, maybe Glozell needs to find out, okay? Glozell Green can look up Kesha lyrics on on uh, Google to make a video. Glozell Green can, when he's she wants to like his picture. She, you tell me Glozell Green hadn't heard nothing about Colleen Ballinger. The only way she knows Corey DeSoto is through Colleen Ballinger. She might want to Google search, is Corey DeSoto problematic? Let me just tell you, for the people out there that want to use that as an excuse, before I sing songs in my videos, like, for example, if I was going to sing, we didn't start the fire, it was always burning, that song by, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, why can't I think of his name now? 
Damn it, now I'm gonna have to look it up. I Got a beast inside and I'm wicking it up. Got a beast inside and I'm wicking it up. Got a beast inside. And I'm waking it up Cause I can't Why are you telling me Trisha uploaded a video? What do you want me to do with this information with so much love? Also, I did get the notification for it, but what do you want me to do with that? Yippee! Ah, I'm so excited! Woo! With so much love, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Yippee! New Trisha Paytas video, let's go! Look up and said, is Billy Joel problematic? Problematic past the Billy Joel before I sing that song in a video. Now I do that for a two second song. No, I'm not watching it. <laughs> oh, Peter. Are you telling me Glozell Green can't look it up? Glozell, I am greatly disappointed in you, okay? I have had one Red Bull. Years. Now I know your career's in the tank, okay? And I know you don't, nobody really watches your videos no more, but this is sad, okay? That you are now on top of a failed career that has gone down a shithole, that you are now supporting a predator, okay? That is problematic, Glozell. Glozell Green, who I used to love, that makes me very sad. Now, not the Glozell dragging. So we've got Daniel Preda dragging, Joey Grisema dragging, Corey DeSoto dragging, Colleen Ballinger. <laughs> what I say on here, okay? Glozell, Condra Call, Lipstick Nick. She like, now I said in a video not too long ago, I said, I'm Lipstick Nick. Lipstick Nick gotten away and been credited with being not problematic for years. She she's, shows up at James Charles painted thing with Jeffree Star's ex assistant, Maddie. I think sending a message, okay? She's best Judy's with Jacqueline Hill. She goes, she's friends with Jeffree Star and James Charles. And now she's liking. Uh, Corey, De Corey DeSoto's uh, picture. Lipstick Nick, I'm starting to think you might be the common denominator of the most problematic people in the influencer industry, okay? Aren't you good genies with Michaela Nagara too? Like, I'm starting to think you got some serious problems, okay? That you defend a lot of predators or you obviously don't have a problem with it, okay? You defend a lot of people that have problematic pasts and histories, okay? I don't know if that's because standing next to them you look real good or how you defend these people. It is one thing to say, oh, well, I'm good friends with Jacqueline Hill and you guys don't really know Jacqueline Hill. If you knew her, you would know these. It's, it's one thing to say that about one person, okay? Oof. But girl, a girl, how are you going to say that about Jacqueline Hill, Corey DeSoto, Colleen Ballinger, James Charles, Jeffree Star, Shane Do Girl, seriously, you are friends with every problematic person in Hollywood, okay? As is Patrick Star. As is Patrick Star, okay? Y'all are a bunch of fools is what you are. Explain to me why these people are still following him. Explain to me why Joey Graceffa is following Corey DeSoto, but he is no longer following Colleen Ballinger. Because like I said, he don't really care about the issues. He doesn't really care about the allegations. He knows that- No one's keeping up with Patrick Starr. He's looking to see if Corey DeSoto, uh, or if he's following Corey DeSoto. Well, he is, okay? So let's go in here, and I want to see a look at, Cor at Corey's followers, okay? He's got 292,000 followers on Instagram. Now, when you go in here and you type in Joey, okay? What's interesting is you start getting, if you put in Joey Graceffa- Oh, this part, this part was- this part was crazy. So he, this is my Peter's theory for why Joey Graceffa is not on following Corey. Which he does. Okay. Here's the proof right here for people that say there's no proof. Okay. There he is right there. The red one. So when you go in here and you look at it, these are the accounts that follow Corey DeSoto. Okay. And this might be part of the reason why Joey doesn't want to unfollow him. This is you an know, interesting theory. Joey Graceffa fan account. Joey Graceffa facts. Joey Graceffa uh, lover. Joey Graceffa fan. Joey Graceffa news. Joey Graceffa Prada. Joey Graceffa the official. Joey Daniel Daniel. Joey Graceffa fan account. Joey Graceffa love love. Joey Graceffa love. Joey Graceffa. Joey Graceffa five. Joey Graceffa. Joey Graceffa stand. Joey Graceffa lives. Manual Daniel more broken. Joey Graceffa's dog. Jingle Graceffa. Uh, Joy Graceffa's plays, Daniel Shippa. I mean, it is so, I mean, you guys, there's literally tons of these people in here that ship Daniel and uh, Joey together, okay, and are super, super fans of Joy Graceffa that are following him. Now, if anybody had any dirt, okay, on Joy Graceffa about, like, let's say, I don't know, maybe his uh, relationship being fake, that didn't have so much to lose, like Colin Ballinger or Shane Dawson or Trisha Paytas or these people who probably think or know it's fake, but they're not going to come out because they don't want Joy Graceffa then retaliating like he did against Gabby Hanna and coming out and sharing a bunch of things. Corey DeSoto doesn't have a lot to lose, right? I mean, he's already basically lost his meal ticket and his career that he didn't really have anyway. So if Joey comes out against Corey DeSoto and unfollows him and all this kind of stuff, and Corey DeSoto, who is Colleen Ballinger's best friend, who is also Joy Graceffa's best friend, knows that Corey, that Joey and Daniel's relationship was fake, which would greatly damage Joey and Daniel's uh, their reputation. That could really hurt Joey Graceffa. So Joey Graceffa might be wanting to be very careful with Corey DeSoto. Now, this is all just speculation, okay? But why would he be so... Colleen Ballinger's not going to come out and say that relationship is fake. Shane Dawson, Trisha Paytas, none of these people that he's been close with throughout the years no. not say that relationship is fake. Private okay? investigator energy. It's an interesting theory. She's boring snake, too. Boring. Boring turd. I just named. Sorry, said it. Said the other day in the video. Boring. 
I Justine getting lashings, T. No, not my girl, I Justine. Leave her. But it makes you wonder, okay? How far reaching this goes. And somebody in my comment yesterday- I Justine, this said, is a safe space for you. The situation is starting to really have a lot of tentacles and it's true and it does. Enjoy. Okay, really good video, really interesting. And I love, love, love Peter's energy. And I love this new era of him taking no bullshit. And I think he's doing such a good job. I Justine, over here is a safe space for you. Don't go over to Peter's channel. I Justine, safe over here. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I really respect that Peter is sticking to his word on covering topics on any creator as long as there's there's no change. And he sticks to his word. He sticks to his integrity. And that can't be said for everyone. And I really respect him for that. And I think he's one of the few that isn't letting up on the dangerous people online. Whereas other ones, you know, if they don't get enough views on it, they don't want to cover it. You know what I mean? But I'll leave it there. I'll link the video down below. Go send Peter some love. And yep.